<laughs> Sorry about that. I deleted the other one. Hi, Philip again. Uh, my ex-husband just called and was telling tell me why he didn't talk to me this morning. So I deleted the other one, and I'm starting this and over. So you won't be able to watch the uh, replays on that. Hi, Stacy. Happy Sabbath. So I thought I'd come back in here and start all over again. Just pretend like I didn't even do that one. Because, you know, we can't. But getting a lot of scoffers in here already tonight, Stacy. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Got a lot of scoffers, some pretty mean ones, too. But, you know, and uh, I was telling them earlier about, this, about the one that you had this afternoon that that you had to block that that said they didn't like looking at your disgusting face now that's terrible oh no 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 it wasn't it was he you know where it for this happened to forerunner too yeah remember that guy that came in and said he didn't want to look at your disgusting face and you blocked him hi happy sabbath um yeah um no they didn't cut me off uh i got a phone call and you know what that happens to forerunner when he gets a phone call out he goes so but I saw it, and I, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and delete it, and I'll start a new one. So, uh, Eric was starting all over again. So, uh, just to share with your followers, and I'm glad I'm back again. It's just, it was a, you know, how phone calls can do. They cut you right off. <laughs> anyway, I, as I was getting back to it, uh, yeah, I know, they don't need to be mean, but people are. You know, they've come in and, and, and said mean things to me already, you know, and you have to, just pray for them, you know, and I pray for, I pray for people all the time because, and I, and when I told my ex, my, my ex-husband, he, he knocked me off the periscope, he says, oh no, I'm sorry, I was almost in tears, he says, I didn't mean to do that, so he didn't know, so I says, I'm gonna, I'll just start it over again, so, but you know, we gotta pray for these scoffers in here, we've had some pretty mean ones in here tonight, we gotta pray for them, because they don't know, they're in the world, you know, we could be in the world, but not be, we can, but, but shouldn't be part of it. You know, we should be totally separate from the world. Hi, good to see you. Happy Sabbath. And that's the problem. There's so many people that are not separate from this world. They're, they live in the world and they do everything that the world does. And, and you know, that's a shame. We shouldn't be doing that. We should not be, be um, doing what the world does. We should be separate. And, you know, and God, and the Bible does talk about that God's people are peculiar people. We are. That's because we're very, very different. You know, that's what sets us apart from everybody else. Because we keep the Sabbath. And other and the other churches don't. And that's why we're ridiculed so bad. I mean, I'm ridiculed so much because I talk about the gospel. Or I I, keep, I go to church on Sabbath. I'm, you know. But, you know, I'm, I, I, I feel this way. I'm doing what God asked me to do. I'm doing what I need to do. You know. And the thing of it is, I'm not going to stop. You know, the Satan can try as hard as he might to stop me from giving this message but I am not going to stop because this message needs to go forth we know there's a day coming when we're not going to be able to give this message anymore the message is going to be halted and as long as we can give this message out we need to do it and the problem of it is there's not enough people giving the message out and we need to get it out as much as we can whether whether it's whether like Stacy does with the health message which we have a beautiful health message I recommend anybody in here that's not following our plant-based bunch, she's in here right now, follow her because she has some very good periscopes and YouTube messages on, the, on health. Follow her because she has inspired me. That's why I'm starting to go the way I am now with organic, because of her periscopes. And I know it's God doing it too, you know, because she has just impressed me so bad. You're so welcome, Stacy, because I've gone in there enough and I've realized that I've been doing the wrong thing and I need to start eating better, you know. I'm trying to become a vegan. I don't eat it. I've stopped eating meat at all altogether. I don't drink milk. You know what kind of milk I drink? Almond milk. Almond milk, and I put that in my cereal. It's very good, you know. And um, I did it. Those that didn't see my grocery haul, it's not on. It's not on my newsfeed, but it's in my profile. Go watch that. What I bought yesterday. And I'm I'm pleased, Stacy, that you said I did pretty good because I wasn't sure about some of the things that I bought, you know, because they weren't all organic. But good. Well. <laughs> I had more groceries than I bought, but the rest of it I didn't want to show. I just showed the main things. But anyway, um, it's real easy to get caught up and, and, and eat like the world does and do what the world does, you know. And the thing of it is, we need to come out and be separate from the world. Uh, yeah, they are. They're very informative, Philip. Exactly. They're, they're so informative. I mean, she's got the laws of health and everything. Oh, you're new to my scope? Well, well welcome. I hope you get a lot of... I hope you... Uh, get some um enjoyment out of it but i hope also that you that you hear the truth that's that's what i that i hope on the most of all that you hear the truth and that it pricks at your heart if you don't know the truth hi check it happy sabbath because 
People don't understand. Um, oh, you had asked me a question. I'm sorry. I probably didn't see your question because the comments go so fast up on the screen. So feel free to ask your question. And again, I'll try to, I'll try to, try to uh, see it if I can. You know, I can't guarantee it. I'm not ignoring you on person, uh, on purpose. Shabbat shalom to you. Check it. Um, well, there was some that I, I, I didn't have enough room for all of them anyway. And and the thing of it is, the main things I wanted to show is what I want. I want I that I showed because there were a lot of the stuff I bought was not organic and stuff that, you know, because we got a fellowship meal tomorrow and I didn't want to show the stuff I bought for the fellowship meal because uh, uh, so that's I just showed the most important things. Hi, I'm I'm doing great. Check it. Hope you're doing fine. So, but uh, so um, I didn't want. So I wanted to show the stuff that. That I want people to be inspired by. So, and I tend to buy them a lot more. This next week, I'm gonna get some more again. Um, um, what could it possibly be? Well, you don't understand. God will sometimes say yes, sometimes he'll say no, and sometimes he says wait a while. If you pray for something and you don't see it come to pass yet, it could possibly be because God doesn't feel it's in your benefit, best interest to to. Uh, give you an answer right away when he's when he when he does that he's answer he's actually answered no he already says maybe wait a while you know it's very very hard i've had that too where you expect him to answer right away and you want the answer to be yes but it's not always going to be that way he knows more about us than we know about ourselves so if he doesn't answer give you an answer yes that does not mean he doesn't hear you and he's not answering at all it's just not the answer that you expected to get so I hope I can clear I cleared that up for you because that's exactly what it is. But just keep praying anyway. You know, he eventually will answer you. But like I said, if it's something that's um well, right now it's it's still the same as it has been. Check it, but the thing of it is <coughs> I do have a I really don't want to talk about this now. It's it's the Sabbath. I won't discuss it now, but but I'm still here. Let's put it that way. Um Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. There's only a few people in here that know about it and stuff. And, and um, but, um, hi, Jaden, welcome back. But um, the other day I got a phone call um, and I was very, very surprised. And I don't think that he minds me telling you um, this, but Overcomer called me on the phone the other day and we had a nice conversation. And you know, he inspired me to keep going. He told me that he's, you know, because of my age, he's really, he's really pleased that a woman my age can get up and do what I'm doing, you know. And I felt, I felt so inspired by talking to Philip. You know, from 19 years old, he knows his Bible. And I praise the Lord for him all the time because his, his periscopes have blessed me as well. And, you know, and I, yes, your, your, your phone call blessed me a lot, Philip. I was crying afterwards the thought that you took enough, enough care and interest in me to call me and talk to me like that. It was really wonderful. Oh, yeah, his scopes are really good. Um, yes, he does. It goes, uh, all glory goes to God. You're exactly right. You know, and I don't, and I don't take, I don't take glory in any of these periscopes that I do. Because all the periscopes that I do, and, and anybody that accepts anything that, that's been said, all glory goes to God. I don't, I'm just the instrument. I'm not the one um, doing it. I'm giving the words, it's there, but the Holy Spirit is convicting their hearts. And I've had several of them come in here and say that they're starting to keep the Sabbath now because I'd be preaching on the Sabbath message. Well, I just tell them it's God, and he is. He's very, very humble, and for like I said, for 19 years old, he knows his Bible. And he, he's got a wonderful mother, and she brought up a, a wonderful young man. He's really a, he's really a blessing, and, and he's, a, he's a, a, a man of God for sure. And every time he comes on, I'll stop whatever I'm doing to watch him because he, he's, he's very good at, at what he does, you know. And yes, it's all about, you're right, Philip, it's all about Jesus. He gives Jesus all the glory, and so do I. And we have to do that. We give Jesus the glory for everything. We can't take it up for ourselves. And you know the thing of it is, there's nothing that we can do of our own without God's help. We can try as we might, but we can't do anything without God's help. If you try to do anything, and, and try to do it on your own. And I've done this. I've tried to try to solve my problems on my own. Well, I'll tell you what. It's almost like I've literally fallen my, on my face. Because I didn't let God lead me. And I, he, we need to lead. We need to let get God lead. We shouldn't we go behind him and let him go before us. The problem of it is, 
we have a tendency to go ahead of God, and we should never go ahead of God. Let Him go before us. He will lead the way the way we're supposed to go, and we just follow Him. But you know, I'm, I'm probably the same way. We all have a tendency to go ahead of God, and then when we do something, when something doesn't go right, then we blame God for it. But it really wasn't God because we didn't have God help us. We were trying to do it on our own, and we put ourselves first. We put ourselves ahead of God. You never do that. You put God ahead of yourself all the time. All the time, you know. And that's what a lot of people need to do. Um, I don't, I don't, don't talk about Black Sabbath. It's evil, it's satanic, and, I, and I'm talking about God's Sabbath. This has nothing to do, hi, love by Jesus, happy Sabbath. This has nothing to do with Black Sabbath. So don't bring that up in here. That, this is a religious periscope, and that, hey, Black Sabbath is not religious. They're satanic. Anyway, oh, that's okay. I just I let you know. Um, it's God's Sabbath I'm talking about. The seventh day Sabbath, which we're in right now, from sundown tonight to sundown tomorrow, is is a Sabbath. It's a very blessed time. It's twenty only twenty four hours in a day, but it's the most blessed day, blessed time of the week. It's a time where we can come apart and worship God and sing praises to Him. Get into the Word. Although I do read the Bible every morning, but it seems like. Uh, when I do it on Sabbath morning, it's even better yet because I'm I'm reading about to him and about him on his blessed day. You know, and it's not our day; it's God's day. You know, and the commandments are His too. You know, people have a tendency to say, "Well, Sunday's my day." And well, basically, it's it's uh, it is your day because it isn't God's day. You know, Sunday uh, when they say that Sunday's their day to worship on, they're about right because it's not God's day. <laughs> well, you can sing praises to Him every day. You can. You can sing praises to him every day. You just can't keep every day holy. That's the only thing, you know. And I just want people to understand that. You cannot keep holy what God never made holy. He only made holy the seventh day Sabbath. He didn't make holy any other day of the week. You may try to keep it holy, but you can't, you know. And, and that's the thing. I read Mark 7, 7 to 9, talked about vain worship. And I want people to understand that that vain worship, Jesus does not have to accept it. It's, it's not um, what you should be doing. When he says in vain do worship me, teach you for doctrines the commandments of men, and that's somewhere else in the Bible, I think in Corinthians. That's what he means. You're taking the Sunday, uh, so-called, they call it Sabbath, which is not, Sunday, and putting it ahead of God, and putting it ahead of, of the Ten Commandments. We cannot do that. Because the Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God, set on tables of stone, and they're with us to this day. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. Um... Uh, no, no, that's not a silly question. That's a good thing you asked that. No, you cannot, you cannot do housework on the Sabbath because that's doing your own pleasure. That's doing work. You know, you may not be getting paid for it, but you're doing work. So you should not be doing anything like that. If you want, if you want to do your housework, do your housework Sunday through Friday. Do not do it on Sabbath. You do not touch any housework on Sabbath. And you have to give God all the glory on that day. Now, if you want to... You know, do your housework after the sun goes down. Because the sun, we know the sun goes down in different areas because we're all in different time zones. Um, why do a lot of people go to church on Sunday? Well, I'll tell you why they go to church on Sunday. Because they've been doing it their whole life. And they don't think anything's wrong with it. And basically it's because the Catholics changed the, the Sabbath. They changed it from Sabbath to Sunday. They said by their authority. That's basically why everybody goes to church on Sunday. It's convenience. Exactly what it is. But it's not right. Just because you're parents, your mother, father, grandparents, or whatever. Um, oh, you're debating with it by your... Oh, well, at least you asked the question. I'm thankful that you did. That was a very legitimate... It was not a silly question at all. Not a silly question. You know, silly questions are those that you don't ask at all, or dumb questions are those. And I'm glad you asked it because I could clarify it for you. But anyway, these people that go to church on Sunday, they don't realize they're not keeping the true Sabbath. They're keeping their own day. They're keeping the day that they chose to keep, not the day that God asked them to keep. Um, well, that's the thing, but the thing of it is, if you do it on, well, well, maybe not. I know housework isn't pleasurable. I understand that. But when you do anything uh, um, on the Sabbath outside of, of keeping the Sabbath, it's doing your own pleasure, like whether you, whether you uh, watch, uh, watch TV or you play video games or things like that. It's doing your own pleasure. Doing things that take your mind off of God. And that's exactly what it would be, you know. Because housework can be done any other day of the week. It does not have to be done on Sabbath. There are a lot of people that do it on Sabbath, you know. 
Uh, Adventists, I don't think, do, but there's other people that do. You know, they'll do it on Sabbath to get their house ready for Sunday for whatever. You know, but that's the thing. You you know, you should not be doing it on Sabbath. Um, oh, don't come in here and say that you're gay because I don't want to hear it. You're bringing, you're opening up for discussion. I'm telling you right now, it's an abomination to God. Um, I don't. Well. I'm not saying you can't make your bed because that's that's common that you would make that. I don't even make my bed on Sabbath. I haven't been doing it for a long time. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I I um I do a I do a periscopes from church. My church services I periscope those. So that's when I come on. And I don't know what time zone you're in, but I'm on the different. I'm on. It's 8:46 where I'm at right now. Going on nine o'clock at night. So I'm on the West Coast. So I'm two hours behind uh, 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 Stacy and I'm three hours behind Philip because he's in New York Stacy's in Illinois my daughter's on the same time as Stacy is so but I, I I periscope between 11 and 1130 when you hear that whistle and you you get the notification that I'm on then you just come in and watch it because it's a church, church church service that I that I uh, I but I, I try to come on Saturday night so I don't always get on here I wasn't going to come on tonight has the Sabbath started yes it has it started uh, a little while ago, when the sun went down, it started. It's, it's sundown Friday to sundown Saturday is the Sabbath. It's just a for, just a plain 24 hours, but it has started. Like I said, <clears throat> we're in different time zones, so some people the Sabbath would start earlier than others, and it would also finish earlier than others. Like Stacy's finishes before mine, so does Phillips. But it doesn't change the fact that it's all the same day. You know, it's sundown from sundown to sundown. We equate the days as as midnight to midnight. Um, well, that's well. You should keep things in order, but don't clean your house. That's the thing you don't do. You can put them in order on Fridays. Get everything in order on Fridays, and don't, you know, clean the house on Fridays, or on on on, on Sabbath. Now, when it comes to me, the to uh, fixing for the fellowship meal for tomorrow, I have everything made that I need to make. However, I did not put it in the oven. I will put it in the oven in the morning. The reason I do that is so it will be hot when I get there. And, and that's okay to do that because they, they heat the stuff up at, at, at the church on Sabbath. But it's already made. I'm, stop, I'm not making it. I'm just baking it. So I'll do that tomorrow. But anyway, well, if you, yeah, I'm not saying that you won't clean it up. Now, I had my dishes to do, but I wasn't going to do them after the Sabbath. So I just, I, I'll, I'll probably do them either tomorrow night. I'll do it um Sunday morning, I'll do the do the uh, dishes. Um, I don't know if I saw your question or not. That's right. Friday sundown to sundown, um, and that's the thing. Um, people don't understand how important the Sabbath really is. They disregard the Sabbath every every week by going to church on Sunday or doing their own other or doing their own thing, working on the Sabbath. You know, whether they have a job or doing things at home on the Sabbath or whatever. You know, getting into the their entertainment. That's what I'm saying. Entertainment is one of the biggest uh, satanic things around. You know why? Because entertainment, what does it do? It takes your mind away from things that are important. I do too. I love the Sabbath. And, and uh, so many people, they say they love the Sabbath, but they're not willing to keep it the way it's supposed to be kept. You know, and of course, we cannot keep the Sabbath on our own volition. We need God's help. We, we can't, you know, if we try to do it by ourselves, we're not going to make it. We have to have God's help to do it. Um, if it has it on, on a Saturday night, no. If it's after sundown, it is considered Sunday morning. That's exactly, because I was going to tell you, we equate the days from uh, midnight to midnight, but that's not really how they go. When Jesus made the days, he made them from even to even, which means... He went from sundown to sundown. So that's basically, biblically, really, reality, how the days go. When the sun goes down, when the sun went down tonight, that was the start of the Sabbath. Now when the sun goes down tomorrow night, that is, this, that is the end of the Sabbath and the start of, the, uh, of Sunday, the first day of the week. Um, oh, okay. Okay, Dolores, you, you can watch the replay. Have a blessed Sabbath. Um, right, well... I well yeah, you're true but you're you're right but we do have to drive to church now um, there's nothing wrong with that because how are we going to get to church I don't have a bicycle and I live too far away so I have to, so driving to church you know that's what the Jews have done they you know 
they said you can't really carry a Bible on the Sabbath and you can't drive your car. That's that becomes legalism with them because we have to get to church. And I so I drive on Sabbath to get to church. I drive back home, but that's all I do, you know. And I'm I'm staying at church tomorrow for the for the uh, fellowship meal. But that's all I'll do. And I'll come home and I'll uh, the rest, rest of the Sabbath. I may even come on tomorrow afternoon after I get home, possibly. I may from 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 the fellowship meal, um, and. Well, that's probably, prob yeah, that's probably true because they don't believe in driving and, or doing anything like that on the Sabbath. But, you know, that's, that becomes legalism again. You know, God's not going to condemn me because I get into my car on Sabbath morning and drive to church. You know, I would, <laughs> he probably would be kind of upset with me if I didn't go. Because, like I said, there's times that I can't go because for one thing or another. And a few weeks in July, we, yeah, in July we won't, be, we won't have church because we have camp meetings. So I, you know just have to do that and I think June we have on too but you know other than that I could try to get to church every Sabbath because I love I love going to church it draws me closer to Jesus I know a lot of people say yeah you don't have to go to church to be close to Jesus but I find it it's much closer if I go because I, I gain so much more from from having been there than staying home and uh, yeah we have a camp meeting come up coming up in July in Oregon Oregon's camp meeting we also have a we also have another camp meeting coming up early July. I think it's in July. Um, early, 8th of July is when we're going to be closed on that Sabbath. That's what it is. It's a uh, light bearers camp meeting. Um, people don't know who that is, but it's it's a, a man that started a, a company in Oregon where they, they give out pieces of literature. They print millions and millions of pieces of literature and hand them out. It's called light bearers. And they have a camp meeting every year at that time. And we sometimes, I sometimes go to that, did last year, and roast it because it was so hot. But anyway, we've got that one and got Oregon Cat Meeting coming up too. So, but I won't be, we close our, we close our church doors then because the pastor's not there and most of the, most of the congregation goes to, goes to church on the sat, on, um, goes to camp meeting. Although I think we did last year, we did, um, out there, it's getting warmer, let's put it that way. It's in the 70s today, but by next week, we're going to be in the 90s. So we are warming up. You may hear a fan running in the background because I don't, I don't have, uh, my air conditioner does not work. So I have to run fans, but I do have a portable air conditioner in the living room that, I run, that I'm running right now. But I have a fan running to kind of keep me cool during the day, and I keep my blinds cold so I never open them. But anyway, it is warming up and it's getting hot. But you know, the fact, I was going to bring that up too. Um, no, not in my church we don't. Not a backup pastor. When he's not going to be there, he has um, he has somebody come as a guest speaker. Now, however, the camp meeting Sabbath. Come to think about it, last year we were open on camp meeting Sabbath. He won't be there, so they show they'll show a, a DVD, put a DVD in, and they'll open the church for those that want to want to be there on Sabbath and and worship. So we might I might be there on on that Sabbath anyway, the camp meeting Sabbath, but there'll be no preaching or anything, not by the pastor anyway. See, our church is big, but we never had a back, backup pastor, so he's there most of the time anyway. But and the thing of it is, um, if I don't go to if I don't go to church on Sabbath, I f I feel really bad about it, you know, you know, and the Sabbath that I didn't get there because my car didn't start. See, that's another thing. We we anticipate our cars will start every Sabbath, but mine didn't start one Sabbath. Um, and and that's the thing. It didn't start. That's a dumb question to ask. Um, it didn't start because the battery had died. Well, um, I had to contact my son and let him know I wasn't going to I wasn't going to be there that Sabbath because of, because my car didn't start. Um, and that's oh, you're you're disgusting, disgusting. And and I didn't start because the because the lights had had uh, lights were left on. Um, oh, you okay? Okay, Philip, have a great Sabbath, and I hope to see you on your Periscope tomorrow. Um, Oh, hope to see you tomorrow. Okay, have a have a blessed Sabbath. Those that are leaving, um, and anyway, my car didn't start because um, the battery was dead, and I contacted my son by text message and said I wouldn't be there. Well, he came he came on Sunday. He lives twenty miles away from me, but he came on Sunday, and he actually went and replaced my battery in my car for me, so I'd have it to drive. And um, and the thing of it was, we didn't know. He told me, he says, Mom, he says, he says, will you um, look under the hood? Yes, he's a good son. He says, tell me if it's a 6-volt or an 8-volt battery. 
Well, I lifted up the hood of the car and looked on, on the hood of the car and I says, hey, there is no battery under, under the roof, hood of my car. And I thought, oh, that's funny. I gotta have a car. Uh, gotta have a car battery. Come to find out, my car is under the back seat. You have to take the back seat completely out. It's under the passenger side. They, they put they put the batteries in funny places nowadays. But anyway, I was just so thankful that he was here for me, you know, and he was willing to do that for me because he knew I needed he needed my car for you know go to church the next Sabbath and things like that. You know, he told me once. He said, Mom. He says, I do things for you because you've done things for me my whole life. You've been there for me, and I want to be there for you. You know, and that's a loving son to feel that way. You know, and it made me cry when he said that because I have a Pontiac Bonneville. Um, and that's the thing. I'm so thankful that I have him. He may be to live 21 miles away, but he will come. Oh, you're, oh, I'm, oh, your mom died yesterday. Oh, I'm, oh, that's, we'll have to pray for you. That's what. To, um, tell me, um, yeah, the ba battery's under the back seat on the passenger side. You have to take the whole back seat completely out. He had to Google it to find out where it was at. So you have to take it completely out. So, but anyway, um, yeah, it, 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 he, but he did get it changed. And you know something? He even, he even paid for part of the battery. He says, Mom, I know you're not, you're scrapped for money. He, say, he says, I'll pay for more than half of the battery. And he did. He paid for over half of the battery. Um, Okay, what is your, what is the one that said your mom died? Would you would you put your name up on the screen? Yeah, it is strange. Um, would you put your name up on the screen? Your your uh, not your username, but tell me your real name so I can pray for you because this this is something we need to stop and pray about because I'm sure you're going through a lot right now. Griff, okay, all right. Dear Father in heaven, we have a, a, a gentleman here whose name is Griff that he lost his mother yesterday to brain cancer. I just pray, Lord, that you be with him and his family, that they're going through a, a time right now, and they're grieving, Lord, and I just pray that you'll comfort them. Put your arms of love around them, and let them know that they'll see her again when you come back in the clouds of glory, that you'll take her to heaven with you when you come back. I just pray, Lord, that you be with him. He'll keep his mind on you, focused on you at all times, and and stay with, stay by, stay, keep you in his heart, and Always remember that his mom loved him very much, Lord, and that she died for a reason, Lord. Her time was up, but it ends up making any, any of the less hard to bear. So I just pray that you you'll comfort him and comfort his family during this during this this uh, sorrowing time. My heart bleeds for him too, Lord. My heart is sad because he lost his mom. Nobody should lose their mother like that. And I pray that you just bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, that's yeah. Sorry for your loss, Griff. That's that's a sad thing to hear. But but uh, just keep your strength. Just keep your chin up, and just remain true to God. If you're a Christian, just stay true to God, and because He loves you dearly, you know. And I'm sure your mom loved you too. But you know something when you th when you think about it, your mom is not suffering anymore, and that's the that's a good thing. She's not suffering anymore. But you can rest assured that if she was a good Christian and she loved Jesus, that she'll see her again someday when, when uh, Jesus comes back. So keep that in your thought and your mind, and, I, and, and you'll, you'll always um, remember. If you remember that, then, then uh, it won't be hard to be faithful. Um, no, I have a Pontiac Bonneville, a Pontiac Bonneville. But anyway, um, <laughs> I kind of got off of praying for that, praying for that person, but you know, it it does us good to pray for people like that, you know. It, it, sor it my heart is sorrowing for him because it's it's sad when anybody loses. Their, oh, you're so welcome. It's it's sad when you lose your mother like that. Nobody should have to lose their mother. But you know, I lost my mother at the age of three, so I never got to know her at all, you know. And but I'm glad you came in here and told me because it gave me a chance to pray for you. And and I'll keep you. I'll continue to keep you in my prayers. Pray for you every day. Every day, you know that God will comfort you. Because you you need the comfort that only God can give, you know, and and he he's going to be there for you. You just have to call on his name, and and he will he will comfort you, you know. He'll wrap his loving arms around you and let you know that everything's going to be okay. So, and uh, and you can rest assured that everything will be okay because your mom more than likely she will go to heaven when Jesus comes. And so you'll see her again. So you won't you won't be without your mom for very much longer because you know something. This world is getting really bad, you know, and it's coming. It's getting to a point where Jesus is uh, 
Yes, he is. He is very, very good. You know something? Jesus coming is very, very soon. And it won't be very long. Oh, thank you. It won't be very long that you're going to see your mom again. You won't have to wait that very long at all. You know, and... But like I said, your mom isn't suffering, so you should so you should think of it that way. She, you know, um, because I have my mother died of, of cancer, and my father died of, of leukemia. They were both suffered, and now you know they didn't have to suffer anymore. And that's you know that's that's a good thing. You know, not that it was a good thing that your mom died, however, because that's sad when that happens. But you can rest assured that if she's if she loved Jesus and, and she's resting in Jesus, and she will see him again, and so you'll see her again too, as long as you. As you believe in Jesus and you and you go to heaven, you'll you'll get to see her and spend your eternity with her in heaven. And that's everybody who looks forward to that. I'm looking forward to spending eternity in heaven too, sitting down next to the feet of Jesus, talking to Jesus, and spending eternity with my family, and seeing my baby daughter that I never got to hold, that that died from stillbirth. You know, that's something I'm looking forward to too. You know. And you know it's 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 hard it's hard to lose loved ones like that. Believe me, it was a hard thing when I lost my daughter, because I didn't anticipate you go through nine months of pregnancy and then all of a sudden to lose her like that. I didn't expect that to happen, but things like that happen all the time, and we have to be prepared for it. It was something I wasn't prepared for, you know, but you know, and it was devastating to me when it happened. Um, oh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. But just rest assured that you won't see your mom, you know, it won't be very long and you'll see her again because Jesus will be coming back again and you'll see her again. So you haven't got very long to wait because we can't, this world can't go on much longer. It's getting worse and worse and worse. You know how worse, how things are getting. It's getting to the point where everything that you see happens. It's going to bring us that much closer to the second coming and to the national Sunday law. I mean, things, every day, things happen that point us to the second coming. You know, this, it's, it's, you know, Jesus is going to have to apologize for Sodom and Gomorrah pretty soon if he doesn't come back because this world is getting just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just as evil as can be. You know, people are people are, are only for their entertainment, for themselves. They're steeped in sin. And when it comes to Jesus and the Sabbath, they don't want anything to do with it because they know if they, if they accept Jesus and they accept the Sabbath, they're going to have to change their lifestyle. And they don't want to do that because it's going to be too hard. Change is, is hard. I will admit that. Because when I was a Sunday keeper, changing to Sabbath was very, very difficult. It was not an easy thing for me to do. But I knew that I had heard the truth and I had to accept it. I couldn't turn my back on it anymore. And I'm glad I didn't. And I will never go to a Sunday keeping church. And, that, and that's the thing. I, I hope that people, when they come in here, that they understand that the Sabbath is very important. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. That's how important the Sabbath is. And after all, Jesus said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He felt it very important. And that's why he's... Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, you probably would be angry. Um, yeah, that's right. We have to be more like Christ. And you don't agree if I'm sure that you are angry and sad. You have a right to be. But you know... Go ahead and cry, because it'll it'll make you feel better to cry. You can you have a right. I know some people grieve in their own way, and you know something. It's been many many years since I've lost my daughter, but you know I still cry for her sometimes. When especially when it comes to the anniversary of her of her death, August twenty seventh, I will just break down in tears that day. You know, so it's so if you want to go ahead and cry, go ahead. Nobody's going to fault you for that, because that's the grieving process. It takes a while. You know, nobody says that, that grief is easy because it's not. It's not easy. It's easier to take in the uh, um, later on. I mean, it get, the, the, the grief becomes less and less, but it still remains with you. I mean, the fact that I lost my daughter back in 1977 still, still haunts me to this day. It's something that I will never forget. Um, you'll feel ashamed. But no, don't feel ashamed. It was it was not your fault. You had nothing to do with your mother's death, not at all. It you know she had a terrible disease, and the sad thing of it is, cancer takes so many people from us. My like I said, my mother had cancer. She died of stomach cancer. My father died of leukemia. They were both taken from me. My my mother when I was only three years old. My father when I was pregnant with my daughter. So my, neither one of my kids know their their grandfather because it, you know well my my son was two years old when. It, when his grandfather died, 
but he so he knew him, he didn't know him hardly at all but my daughter never got to know him because he, he died before she was born so don't feel bad and don't feel ashamed it's not a, not your fault you had nothing to do with it it's just the facts of life you know death is hap death happens because of sin you have to think of it that way before when man was created when Adam and Eve were first created they were created with with a with a thing that they would never die but once they fell into sin that's what brought the sin that's what happened god once they sinned and partook of the of the knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they lost their their e eternal life so to speak they don't don't live forever they don't have immortality either you know had immortality up to that point but then sin and death and that's how death death comes in because of sin you know your mom got cancer all because of sin she got and you know it's, I don't wish that on anybody, but it does happen. It's the facts of life, and it's how you deal. Yes, it is. It's very unfortunate, but it's how you deal with it that, that really matters. But just keep your chin up, Griff, and just remember that the Lord is there for you, and he'll never leave you or forsake you. And you've got the rest of your family to to be with and, and comfort you, too. And you're all grieving at the same time. You can be there for each other and comfort each other because you're going to need it now more than ever, you know. But... But just, just like I said, just remember, God is there, and He wants you to, to, to come to Him and, and ask for forgiveness and, and ask Him to, to help you with your grief, and He will. You can't, you can't get your grief. Um, you're, you're so welcome. It's gonna be, yeah, just wonderful, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. We're all here for you. Here, Periscope's here for you, and um, feel free to come back on my Periscope anytime. And anytime you need prayer, I will pray for you. I'm not the best prayer in the world. But you know, it's from my heart, and God hears the hears the the faithful pray. You know, and I it was well-meaning, and God knew I meant every word of it. You know, and we're all going to keep praying for you each. And every, I'll pray for you every day because I can see what you're going. That's right. Well, you say God hears no one. Oh yes, He does. How dare you say God hears no one? He most certainly does. You are a skeptic. You're a person that doesn't believe in God. Well, God will deal with you because He does hear. God hears and He answers prayer. Um, that's right. You got to get closer to God. You don't depart from Him because you're, because you've lost your mom. Um, yes, He. You say He doesn't hear you, maybe because there is something that you've asked for that's selfish. Um, I no, I didn't say you're going to hell. I'm just saying you don't believe. If you don't believe in God, you say He doesn't hear you. God does hear you. The thing of it is, he doesn't always answer your prayer the way you feel he should. Because he knows more for you, for what you need, than what you yourself know. He may feel, but just keep on praying. But maybe what you're praying for is selfish, or he feels that it's not beneficial for you to receive what you're asking for. You have to think of it that way. Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says wait a while. That's probably what he's done. He says wait a while. So whatever... It is you've been praying for. I'm not saying he never will answer your prayer. It's just that he hasn't answered it in the way you've chosen. He said no for right now, or wait a while. You just have to have to give him time. It'll it'll work out if it's meant to. If your prayer is meant to be answered, there's many times that I've prayed too, and I haven't seen the answer right away. But then I realize, well, God knows more for me than I know for myself. He knows what's beneficial for me, and he knows what what I need and what I don't. Because we think we know what we need but you know we don't god knows more what we need than we ourselves know so he's going to when we ask for prayer when we ask for help he's going to deliver accordingly um you have given your life to christ before well that's wonderful if you've lost your if you've lost your way and fallen back please come back to him and renew that renew your life with christ you'll feel be a much better person for it um, I wouldn't. It really, you really, you really shouldn't be drinking because you're putting raw, bad stuff into your body. Uh, you know, just grieve. Don't, don't take, don't do the wrong thing. Don't try to commit suicide, or don't, don't take things into your body that's going to be harmful to it, because you, you can't do that. Um, just, just, uh, just be hang in there, and and you need your family right now. That's what you need. You need your God. You need your family. All stick together. You need each other. And be there for each other. But whatever you do, don't do something that you might regret. 
because it's going to come back to get you later on. You don't want to put anything in your body that's harmful. Because Jesus said if you destroy your body, it's going to destroy you. So please don't drink any alcohol. You don't need to do that. Don't take that. Don't take any drugs. Just be patient and everything will work out. Um, that's, how can one turn away from sin when God created us and to live in sorrow and sin? He didn't... He didn't create us to live in sorrow and sin. You've got to understand, sin was never never in the picture until Adam and Eve sinned. They were made perfect. And they were, they were destined to live forever until they fell into sin. And then when they fell into sin, that's when they lost it. They were, they were subject to death. And they were all subject to death. Um, you don't understand. You're blaming everything on God. You're you're blaming things on God that God has no has a lot of times doesn't have control over. Blame the devil for a lot of the stuff. The sin that's in this world and things that are happening in this world are from the devil. They're not from God. He doesn't do that stuff. Um, that's right. He he does. He he gives us all choices. Exactly right. He doesn't use force. He does and his free will. Everybody's given. He everybody's given free will. It's what you choose. What you do with that free will that that counts. You know, some, some uh, you know, we all have free will, but unfortunately, a lot of people will turn their back on God and they'll take that free will and they'll misuse it. You can't do that. And when it comes to the, like Sunday and Sabbath, God gives us our free will on that too. He's not going to make us go to church on Sabbath. And He's not going to tell us we can't go to church on Sunday, those that do. He gives you free will. But he hopes in the same a same aspect that you make the right choice. <clears throat> and <clears throat> well, that's true. It does come with consequences. Oh, I I hope so when Jesus comes back that I will I will see them too because, um, yes, he will. He will forgive you. That's wrong to say that he won't forgive you. I gotta get some more water again. God will forgive you. You can't say that he won't. He forgives you as long as you're willing to as long as you're willing to ask him for forgiveness. He will forgive you. But the thing of it is, you cannot be you become a, well, you've become a Satanist. Well, I don't know why you would choose to become a Satanist. You need to turn your life over to God because being a Satanist, you know what's going to happen to you. You will lose your save, salvation if you stay in that. And that he'll still forgive you, but you need to turn a, a about face. You need to repent from being a Satanist and tell God you want you want him back into your life and you want to you want to accept him again. Ask him to come into your life and he will. But being a Satanist is, is is the worst thing that you can ever do. Please come out of that. Because you don't want to do something like that. That's terrible. Because you don't because you get a hold of Satan will get a hold of you and and you Satanist like that, he'll get a hold of you and he'll and he'll do things that you never would expect to happen. And he'll take you so far down that you're never gonna be able to come out of it. So you need to ask ask God to come back into your life and take him into your heart. You know, there's a lot of Satanists in this world. And I still and I and I'm as long as you're on you have um, free will or as long as you have breath in your in your body, you have a chance to still be saved. <clears throat> but you have to want it. You have a chance to be saved, but you have to reach out and grab it. Um and and you have to grab it. Grab it while you still can. Because Jesus is wanting everybody to ask for, as, as to come to him and ask for forgiveness. We can't leave one sin unrepentant. Um, <coughs> well, so, yeah, you know, that's true. There's probably a lot of Satanists out there that don't realize they are. And, of course, you have some others that do realize they are. But the thing of it is, as long as they're alive, they still have to, can be prayed for. And we can still ask the Lord to deliver them from from the big Satanists, but the thing of it is, they have to want it too. And unfortunately, we know a lot of them are not going to want to be released from Satan because that's what they've chosen to ch over God, and they're going to die that way. Unfortunately, welcome to Periscope for the very first time. But we can still pray for them as long as they've got breath in their life and their bodies, and they've got free will. I hope that they turn their life around. Because it's very important. We don't want to go the wrong way. Hi, good to see you. I want every. <clears throat> oh, you're so welcome. And uh, I hope that things get better for you too. Um, <clears throat> oh, and you just came in. But thank you for coming in and, and um, 
<clears throat> and joining my Periscope. You know, I try to do the best I can to try to get these messages out. No Satan likes to take my voice and likes to make it real hoarse and doesn't want me to... Oh, nice to meet you too. He doesn't want me to get this message out, but you know I'm going to do it anyway. I don't do that in here, so I suggest you leave this Periscope. But you're not going to get your perverse stuff that you want, so leave this Periscope in now. You know, you know the thing, the devil wants me to to quit, but I'm not going to quit. As long as God gives me breath and I'm going to I'm going to have a chance to do it, I'm going to do it. And I I do these because I want people to be saved. Um that's right in the name of Jesus. And you know something <clears throat> when Philip was talking to me on the phone the other, uh, the other day, he says, um, yeah, well, the devil is a liar. <laughs> he's, a, he's a liar and he's a father of lies. But you know, when Philip was talking to me on the phone the other day, he told me that Forerunner had watched my replay, one of my replays I had the other day. He, he's watched one of the other ones before. And, I, and you know, I, I get real... <laughs> when I realize that he's lost my replays, it makes me wonder, what does he think? You know, so I try to do the best I can at these, you know, so that he, <laughs> that, of course, you know, he's, he's an evangelist and he knows the word of God, you know, but I think he comes in my replays to see if I'm, if I'm telling the truth or not, you know, but I have no, no reason to lie to anybody, you know, and I'm, I get into the word of God and tell you exactly what the word of God says, because we know there's a day coming when our faith is going to be tested severely. And if we don't have the seal of God, we'll end up taking the mark of the beast because there's no middle ground. Um, oh, you're going to keep... Oh, thank you. And and that's the thing. People like to say, well, I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in Satan. But the thing of it is, if you don't believe in Jesus, you believe in Satan because there is no middle ground. There's no sitting on the fence. You know, you got to believe in something. The atheist says, well, I don't believe in anything. Well, if they don't believe in God, they certainly believe in the devil. And we got to keep praying for my grandson. You know, he's talking to me now, but but we got to keep praying for him that he'll come out of, out of out of being atheist. And when I talk to him on the phone, I want to say something to him um, so bad, but I don't because, you know, he's got to make that choice himself. I can't force him to come out of being an atheist. He knows what's right and wrong. I just have to pray for him that he'll choose the right way before it's too late because... There's not going to be much time left that, that anybody can choose to accept Jesus, you know. And I don't want anybody to, to come in here and say that they were never told what the mark of the beast was, what the National Sunday Law is, when I talk about it all the time. And I feel like it's imperative that I do talk about it because it's something that's coming upon this earth and we must be ready for it. I know a lot of people don't want to accept it that it's coming, but it is coming. And we can't deny the fact it's coming. We've got to be ready for it. And it's not going to be something easy to take, let me tell you, because when we know that we're going to be text tested severely, and we're going to have a death decree put on our heads. And we got to, uh, what are we going to do when they, when they want to kill us? Are we going to be willing to die for Jesus? Or are we going to recant? And we're going to say, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to die and I'm going to take the mark of the beast because we know what's going to happen. See, the thing of it is, they say they're going. To, they'll, they'll take the mark of the beast because they want to buy or sell, but they don't real. Yeah, they're going to throw us in jail, or you know, we're going to be. We're probably, you know, uh, isolated somewhere. You know, that's right. We all need strength, and that's what I ask God every day, to give me strength. We all need to pray for that. We need the strength, though, all the strength that we can muster to get through the time of trouble, because if we don't, if we can't go through the trials that we're having on this earth and believe me I have plenty of them and if you if I can't, can't get through them if I can't have the strength to get through them I'd never make it through the time of trouble so I ask Jesus every day Jesus please help me get through the time of trouble and you know he helps me he's blessed me in many ways however he's not going to take me out of my time of out of the problems I'm having I know that he's not going to take me from them but he's going to take me through them there is a difference um, Oh, how do you give your life to Christ? Just kneel down by your bed and just pray that Jesus will come into your heart. That's what you need to just ask him to come into your life. Um, it's it's hard for you to... Yeah, it, it is sometimes. Um, oh, you're following me? Well, good. I'll follow you too. You know, it is hard. It is hard to give this message out for the simple fact. I know I'm going to have a lot of people come in here and ridicule me for... for um, Hi, Lance. Happy Sabbath. For for preaching on this message a lot of people ridicule me because of my age because they don't feel that a woman my age should be doing this but you know I feel impressed by God to do it because I feel that that 
if I don't do it, who's going to do it? You know, and Philip told me he was impressed by me too, because as far as I know, from all the all the people that I've seen on Periscope, and I've I've seen a lot, but I haven't seen everybody, of course. That I'm the oldest one that ever does Periscope. There might be older ones out there, but but the thing with it is, I'm the oldest one that 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 he knows of that do, that's doing Periscope. Periscope, you know. Um, oh, you. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm glad you say that, loved by Jesus, because. You know, it's not really me. It's God. It's God doing it. What's the Sabbath? The Sabbath is right now. We're in the Sabbath. It's from sundown tonight to sundown Saturday night. That is the Sabbath. It's a 24-hour period. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. I continue to do it. As long as God gives me breath in my body and I can do this, I'm going to continue to do it. Like I said, the devil has tried many, many times to stop me from giving this message. He's tried to take my life many, many times, but he's never succeeded. And I I'm, I'm thank the Lord for that. Because there's because we know that he's going to do everything he can. Um, what can you not do on the Sabbath? You can't do your own pleasure. You cannot do um, video games. We don't watch secular TV. We don't what we don't uh, do things that you sh would normally do during the week. Entertainment is is one of the worst things that you can do anytime, but especially on the Sabbath because that's the time we're supposed to give our our minds over to God. Can I do Periscope? Absolutely, because it's it's getting the word out. It is it is preaching the word of God, and and, and it's what I'm doing right now. This is the Sabbath, and I'm preaching the word of God, and I can absolutely do it on the because there's some that do come in on Sabbath. Um, uh, we have a we have a fellowship meal at our church tomorrow. We have them um, every Sabbath except the first Sabbath of the month. There's nothing wrong with that because we're eat, uh, because the food has already already been prepared the day before, so we can we can eat it. Yes, entertainment is, is is the one thing that'll take your mind away from God, because people get involved with their video games and and things like that, or watching DVDs or videos or something like that, um, and they're not, and they haven't got their mind on Jesus, because that's what the devil wants. If he can take your mind off of Jesus with this entertainment, he's going to do it. He's going to do it, everything he can to get, keep your mind. Hi, hi, Justin. Happy Sabbath. Good to see you. He's going to do everything he can to get your mind off off of off of Jesus, and that's why he's that's why entertainment is out there so much. Um, and well, you don't know the Periscope. Only thing that I do on Periscope is do religious things. Now I have done grocery hauls, which are, which turn out to end up be religious anyway because I brought the health message into it. And I have done a Periscope or two about helping the homeless, doing scarves, hats, and scarves for the homeless. But basically. My periscopes are on religion. There's a lot of periscopes in here. Uh, besides mine, they're, they're religious periscopes. Um, and, oh man, look at these people. Hi, Tasha, good to see you. Happy Sabbath. And, but that's, you don't know busy against between, per, by peris, periscope is okay to be on Sabbath. Um, how long have I been religious? Well, oh, let's put it this way. I used to be a Lutheran up until I became a Seventh-day Adventist over 40 years ago. So I've actually been a Christian for many, many years, and I've been a Seventh Day Adventist, and I and I have never uh, turned my back on the truth. Um, it is it is still held on the Saturday. It's still held on Saturday. This is the Sabbath right now. This is considered Saturday. We're on the Seventh Day Sabbath right now, from sundown tonight to sundown tomorrow, is the Seventh Day Sabbath. See, we equate the days being from midnight to midnight, but that's not actually how God made the days. He made them from even to even, so it's from sundown to sundown. Yes, it is. It's still on Saturday, and we're in we're in the Sabbath right now. Um, no, we we don't we don't celebrate because they're pagan. Um, what's the difference between Lutheran? And, well, I'll tell you what the difference is. I was a Lutheran. A big difference. The difference between the two is because the Lutherans go to church on Sunday. But they also accept a lot of the false doctrines of the Catholic Church. Well, we as Seventh-day Adventists, we do not. We're completely separate from the world because we are total Protestants because we do not accept the Sundays keeping. We do not follow the Catholic Church in any which, in which way, shape, or form, nor do we accept the false doctrines of the Catholic Church. That's the exact... Oh, you want to know about some of the doctrines? I'll go over some of them. It's the, the doctrines of heaven or hell when you die, the doctrine of... Uh, the rapture of the church, which a lot of people, which is amazing to me, some have never heard of the rapture. But that's a false doctrine, and also that you burn your soul burns to heaven and hell forever. Those are the actually the three that I that I know that. Um, well, that's probably true. They probably would, but the thing that is, they 
can't say, the Lutherans cannot say they're true Protestants because they're not, because they might as well call themselves Catholic because they're following the Sunday keeping. They're following the, the Catholics on Sunday. They've got the false doctrines that the Catholics have. They've got the, the false doctrine of heaven or hell when you die. How that came about was in the Garden of Eden when Satan was tempted Adam and Eve into sin. He told them that they'd be God, like gods and live forever. That's how the heaven or hell came in, in into being. Because when you, when you start preaching people into heaven or hell, you're giving them immortality. And the only one that has immortality is God. We will not have immortality until Jesus comes back and our bodies are changed. We'll have perfect bodies then. That's the only time that we're going to have immortality. We do not have the immortality now. So to preach people into heaven and hell, which the, past, which the ministers do at the funerals, because I've been to many of them for my family members when I was in the Lutheran church, um, and, I, and I believed everything they said because I didn't know any better. I was a Lutheran at the time, and I didn't know that they didn't go to heaven or hell when, when they died. You know, I believed everything they said, but now that I know that, because my mom passed away when I was three years old, and my dad told me and my family told me that she was up in heaven looking down on me. Well, being a three-year-old girl, I, I was afraid to do anything wrong, afraid that she'd be disappointed in me, you know. But now that I realize that she's in her grave awaiting one of the two resurrections, it's comforting to me to know that she's not up in heaven. She never was. And and that's the thing. There are, are There are people up in heaven... But those are the ones that were, were resurrected when Jesus died on the cross. There was a great earthquake, and Elijah, Enoch, and Moses are up there. But that's it. Um, and that, and that's, that's the thing. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's true. It's sad that they, that they um, taught me that. And I, and, I got, and I know good and well that they're, that they're lying to me now. They were lying to me. They, see, they told me what they believed to be the truth. That's what they were taught, and they didn't know anything different. So they... they want me to believe the same thing. Well, I did for many, many years. And now that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, I know it's not biblical. Um, and that's the thing. When stuff's not biblical, i got to talk about it. Um, yeah, they did. They thought they were right. Exactly. And and, that, and that's the thing. They, they thought they were right. Um, yes, absolutely we believe in heaven. We so, most certainly do. Um, we certainly do. Um, and that's the thing. People think we don't. Jesus is up in heaven right now, um, pleading our case before the Father, because he's going over the books of book of life, of the names that are in there, to see who's fit for heaven and who isn't. That's why we're having the investigative judgment now. If there was no investigative judgment going on, how would Jesus know who to take to heaven? You have to have a judgment beforehand to know who's fit for heaven and who isn't. You don't want to take somebody and burn them in hellfire that should have gone to heaven, nor would you want to put somebody in heaven that, that should have gone in hellfire. But that's the thing. Um, it, 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 but for the Catholics to bring that heaven or hell thing in there, they've got people snowed thinking, uh, um, well, there is no such thing. Well, let's put it this way. When, when Jesus comes back, he's going, to, he's going to take the righteous to heaven with him. Now, the ones that are in their grave, the righteous, the righteous dead, are going to be raised before we are. All he has to do is speak the word, and they're going to come forth out of their graves. And they're going to be ra raised to everlasting life. And the wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. And they're going to suffer eternal death. They're going to, be, they're going to die the first time from being slain by, the, by, the, by his brightness. Then he's going to be resurrected. He's going to resurrect them again only to take over the holy city and be destroyed in hellfire. So they're going to die two, de two times. Um, no, the wicked are not going to heaven. No, the righteous go to heaven. When Jesus comes back again, the, the, I'll read it to you in Second in, in Thessalonians. Um, yeah, First Thessalonians 4. I'll read that, 4, 14 to 17. I was just getting ready to go to that. Because that, that talks about what happens when Jesus comes back. Because I know a lot of people don't, don't understand. See, the only, only ones that are going to heaven are the righteous. The wicked are not going to heaven. Because they're, they were slain by the brightness of Jesus coming. When he, when he comes back again, they'll be slain by his brightness. They will be laying on the ground. The birds will eat their carcasses. The only one that will be alive on this earth during that time will be the devil. But when the Bible talks about him being in a bottomless pit with a, being bound by a chain, that is only symbolic. What that means is he's going to be bound on this earth. It's going to be total darkness. 
When he's on this earth during that thousand years, it's total darkness, and he's going to be bound by a chain of circumstances. He's not going to have anybody to tempt because the wicked are on the dead ground, oh, let, dead, slain by the brightness of Jesus coming, and the and the wick of the righteous are in heaven with Jesus. That's why he's going to be miserable during that time. Um, abs yes, he will. He's not, and his feet are not going to touch this earth either. He's going to, his teacher, feet are going to touch the Mount of Olives. We're going to go to meeting him in the air. And I'll read the First Thessalonians to you. Start First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as though others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with those words. Those are beautiful words in that in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. You know, it exactly tells you right there how Jesus is going to come. He's going to come visibly, audibly, and literally. And there is no such thing as a secret rapture. Um, the Catholics have brought on this false doctrine of the secret rapture because a lot of people believe that Jesus is coming back secretly. There's going to be seven years of tribulation, and then Jesus is coming back for who's ever left. None of that is biblical because he's not coming secretly because Revelation 1, 7 says every eye shall see him even those that pierced him. And besides that, there is no such thing as seven years of tribulation either. Our time is that tribulation is going to be cut very, very short. We're not going to be able to take it if it, if it goes on forever, uh, for seven years. Um, uh, Exodus 23, 20 to 27, okay. Because it, it, it's going to be cut short and in righteousness. So we know that... Um, yeah, it so it does sound, but you know, they use that word seven because it is completeness. It is a sign of completeness, but there is, it's only going to be three and a half years. And we know the Bible, the, the day for a year in the Bible, you know, so a thousand years is like a day in the Bible, you know, and a year is like a day in the Bible. Um, and, and, okay, you want a 23 to 20, 27, but, you know, and that, that, um, that First Thessalonians four thirteen to eighteen is a very good passage on Jesus' second coming. But so many people don't don't know how he's coming back. Yeah, three and a half days. We know it's not going to be very long because even the wicked people are not going to be able to to stand it. You know, we know as Seventh Day Adventists, we're not going to be kept from the time of trouble. We are going to have to go through it. But the plagues are not going to fall on us. It's only going to fall on the wicked people. And they're not going to fall on us. If you remember at the time of, of back in ex, uh, back in in Egypt, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were not taken out of the of the time of the plagues. There, they had to go through them, but they didn't affect them because they put the blood of of the lamb on the door on their doorposts. But God didn't take them out of Egypt during that time. He had to have that. They had to go through it. But like I said, it didn't affect them. The same thing with us. The the plagues will not affect us. But we, we will not be taken out of it either. We will have to see what's going on. So, um, somebody want me to read Exodus 23, 20 to 27. Okay. Mm. All right. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee unto the place which I have prepared. Be, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your, your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and I don't know who, who, who wanted me to read this, but and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. I don't think I'm going to read any more of this because uh, that's, I think it's a non adventist I think one does. But anyway... And, that, and that's the thing. We don't, you don't deny the love of Jesus. You don't, don't deny the Sabbath. Don't keep your own day. Um, oh, welcome. I used to live in Indiana. I used to live in LaPorte, Indiana. Um, so, welcome. 
and come back into this periscope. Follow me, because I do periscopes periodically. Not every night, but I do them most nights. And I, and these are about the only thing I do is religious scope. So if you're into religion, you're into prophecy, come into my periscope, and you're going to get it. But anyway, um, but anyway, we can't deny we can't deny the Sabbath. The Bible talks about it being this. I'll, I will read Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11 because there's so many people in. Um, oh. <laughs> Oh, so sorry, Brad. I hope you get to feeling better. But I'm glad you're here just for a little bit, you know. And and that's the thing. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11 is the fourth commandment. And this is the one that everybody denies. You know, there's, God wrote ten commandments, but unfortunately, they overlook the fourth commandment. They'll keep nine of them, but when it comes to the fourth commandment, they throw it out like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Um, okay, you too, Brad. Have a happy Sabbath, and I hope you get to feeling better. Okay, Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. This is the fourth commandment. Um, well, most people do. They deny the Ten Commandments. People will come in here and say that it doesn't matter what day we go to church on. But according to the Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, it does matter. Because that's the Sabbath. Because he 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 said that the Sabbath is the, is the day to honor him. He sanctified that and set it apart. But people go to church on Sunday because that's the only thing they know. But when they come in here and hear about the Sabbath, some of them don't want to accept it. They want to turn their back on it. And you know that's being very dangerous because when you hear the truth and you don't accept it, then then it be, it, it's very sad because b b the Bible says if you rem if you receive the knowledge of the truth, if after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. If you if you don't accept it after receiving it, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. So they don't understand. It's very, very, very dangerous. Um, thank you. That they have to accept what they hear. You know, God gives us free will. He's not going to twist their arm, however, to accept it. But we have to pray for them that they will accept it. I give the word. I just pray that the Holy Spirit will convict their heart. And there have been some that have come in here and told me that they're starting to keep the Sabbath now. Um, no, he's not going to send you away. Basically, what it amounts to is there is a national Sunday law coming where that's in forced Sunday worship. What he's going to do is that is going to be the testing time. Either you have the seal of God, which is the Sabbath, or you take the mark of the beast. There's no, there's no middle ground. And the reason I say that is because that is, the, that is what the national Sunday law is about, is in forced Sunday worship. And it's not a chip. It's a symbolic so if you actually, if you're going, if you continue to go to church on Sunday, and the national Sunday law is enforced, you will take the mark of the beast automatically, and then there's no turning back. So the best thing you can do is to come out of Sunday now, before that time comes. You cannot wait until the last minute to come out of Sunday because if you do, it'll be too late. Um, and that's the thing. You don't want to accept it. Well, then we on to you. Um, yes, there is going to be a Sunday law. Exactly. That's right. Not just the Sabbath, but all the commandments. People, see, I know I have people, I have scoffers. Well, all I can say, you scoffers, scoff now, regret it later, because God will deal with you. Because you're scoffing about the Word. You're denying the Word of God. I'm telling you what the Word says, and you're denying it. So woe unto you when you deny it like that. Um, well, they may go to church on Sunday, but the thing of it is, if you continue to go to church on Sunday, and you don't go to a Sabbath-keeping church when that National Sunday Law comes, you're going to take the mark of the beast. And the thing of it is, the people that are denying the Sabbath are the very ones that are, are going to turn their back on God. And they're going to turn their back on us, too. And they're, and they're going to call us heretics and everything else. No, Satan's not welcome in here. Neither are you. Thank you. And they're, they're going to turn their back on us. And that's the thing, you know. Uh, I'm not a false prophet. You just don't understand. Um. Uh, he knows I'm not a false prophet. Yeah, I am. I guess I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Um, how do we effectively study God's Word? Well, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you discernment. You know, because there's a lot of things in the Bible that are hard to understand. What's the mark of the beast? That's enforced Sunday worship. Because um, that's what that is. That's That'll be coming upon, upon us before too long. It's enforced Sunday worship. Where there's going to be a law. If, if, in fact, these people that are skeptical, I want you, when you have time, to get into the Word of God, get into uh, who enforces it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll read to you Revelation 13. It's going to be starting in the United States. It's going to go globally. So there's nowhere that you can go. Um, 
I know we have to keep all ten of them exactly, but what I'm saying is, most people will keep nine of them, but they, they but they throw the fourth one out. That's what I'm saying, love by Jesus. I know we have to keep all ten of them. They'll keep the other nine, but they won't keep the Sabbath. How will it be global? Because it'll be in four, it'll be signed into law, and it's going to go everywhere. There's, you'll be not be able to escape it. And once once it's signed into law, then then that's when the mark of the beast. Um, uh, uh, right now. <laughs> Satan has not tricked me. Satan's tricked that person. We just have to pray for that person. <laughs> you know, we have to pray for that person. That person doesn't know what they're saying. Because I know what the, what the Bible says. And anybody in here that's skeptical about this, get into the book. Get into the book of Revelation chapter 13. That is the chapter on the mark of the beast. Most of it is very easy to understand. If you get into it and read it, you'll understand what the Bible is talking about. Because it, it were, there's two beasts in Revelation. You have the beast of the sea. This is the first beast, which is the papacy. And you have the second beast, which comes, which is the United States of America, apostate Protestantism. And that's exactly what the Protestants on Sunday are. They are apostates because they're going against the word of God. They're keeping their own day. They're not keeping the, the day that God sanctified and made holy. What day is the Sabbath? The day that we're in right now. From sundown Friday to sundown Sabbath, Sabbath or Saturday is the Sabbath. That is the seventh day Sabbath. That is the day that God instituted and made holy. That is the only day that's been made holy. You can't keep any other holy day holy. Um, uh, read Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11. I just read it a little bit ago. Um, but they're symbolic. But, and I know it says right hand or forehead, but it's symbolic. It's your thought and your action processes. What you think about and what you do is what it's going to, what it's going to involve. Um, well, that's true. Jesus is the Sabbath. It is this, Mark 2.27 says, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath basically too because Jesus kept the Sabbath. If it was good enough for him, it should be good enough for us. He went in the synagogue on the Sabbath for to, for, for to read. You know, when he was 12 years old, he even kept the Sabbath. He started out preaching then. He had to be about his father's business. You know, Mary and Joseph couldn't find him. They had left, they had left, Bethlehem, um, be left Bethlehem and went back. And they couldn't find him. Or Jerusalem, and they couldn't find him. Uh, uh, no, no. Because God knows. See this, you know, this is all symbolic. God knows who's going to... He knows the end from the beginning. He knows who's going to take the mark of the beast, who isn't, and that's and that's the thing. We don't. I don't want people to to take it unnecessarily because it's not it's not necessary to do so. That's why I come in here and do this because so many people don't understand what the mark of the beast is. It is very important. It's prophecy. It's going to be fulfilled one of these days, and it's coming right around the corner, and it won't be very long. We cannot say as, as Seventh-day Adventists exactly when the mark of the beast is coming, but I can tell you this, it's not going to be too long down the road. You see the signs all around us. Prophecies being fulfilled before our very eyes. Next week, um, Donald Trump is going to go to the Vatican and visit with the Pope. There's prophecy right there. And, you know, he's already signed, signed an executive order uniting church and state. That's what's going to bring on the National Sunday Law. We do not, as Adventists, believe in... in implementing any law that's going to enforce any certain day to be worshipped on even though we know Sunday's the wrong day we do not believe in that but we know it's coming and we have to accept it because it's it's going to infect the whole world and there's nothing you can do um, we definitely will be but we got to get through the tribulation first we definitely will be um, experience yes yes exactly we will be here to experience it because, the, like I said, the tribulation won't be very long, and right after that, Jesus comes. But I don't want you to take the mark of the beast. We need to be very careful that we stand up for God and we keep the Sabbath. I don't want you to, to turn your back on God when that time comes. Because a lot of people, including our own denomination, because Ellen White said a, a greater majority of the Seventh-day Adventists are going to be lost. For the simple fact is, they don't want to take, they don't want to... Um, lose their life. They don't want to, you know, that death decree is going to be put on their head. They don't want to lose their life. But they don't understand. Taking the mark of the beast is the eternal death. It's the second death. You don't want that. We don't want that at all. It's the second death. And once you get the second death, that's eternal. You know, they're, they're never to be raised again. And we don't want that. So, um, 
How do you know what the mark of the beast is? Because it's in fourth Sunday worship. That's exactly what it is. Because right now, and uh, uh, they're wanting us, everybody, to get back to church again, because of uh, um, they say it's not a Christian society, and basically because of climate change. That's what they're trying to is talk about. And I've seen many videos about it, where the, it's because the Pope is talking about climate change. They figure, well, if you keep one certain day like Sunday, you can um, save energy. Well, you can keep you can keep the Sabbath and save energy too. So what's the difference, you know? Um, and that's the thing. They want us to get back. Because actually, in essence, they are right. We are not as much of a Christian society as we should be. A lot of people have turned their back on God. People that used to go to church years ago don't go anymore. They're, they're agnostics or they're atheists. They want nothing to do with God, like my grandson, because you can't even talk to him about God. You ask him why he's an atheist, and he won't even tell you. He says, I don't want, I don't, you know, I think, whether he knows or not, I don't know, but... He says he doesn't want to talk about it. So that see, that's the sad thing when they don't want to talk about it. Um, well, I'm not saying you have to go to church to be a good Christian, but it draws me closer to Jesus. Staying outside the church doesn't help me draw closer to Jesus. That's right. The nation turned their back on God. They most definitely have. And that's why they're wanting to bring on the National Sunday Law, to get everybody to go back to church again, you know. But people the most people don't understand when that national sunday law comes and they're going to church on sunday they're going to take the mark of the beast it's that simple they need to come out of the sunday keeping churches now because the revelation um 13 18 talks about coming out of babylon you need to come out of babylon because it's nothing but confusion that's exactly what it is it is total confusion sunday is confusion that's what, he's got everybody confused the devil has Oh, telling them that Sunday's the right day to go on, you know. You know, that's Satan's day. It's not God's day. <coughs> oh, don't talk about that in here because gay weddings are not beautiful. They're an abomination to God. That's disgusting. They are total dis It's total disgusting what they're doing. God loves the sinner but hates the sin. They will not make it to heaven as long as they're going to be gay. They need to come out of it. Um, yeah, you're right, the transgender. You know, I'm sick and tired of people coming in here and talking about gays. Like, they're so important. Like, they're so special. They're no better than anybody else. And the problem of it is, their agenda has known love is not love. God instituted marriage between a man and a woman, not between two men or two women. Gay marriages are ugly. They are not beautiful. God never created ugly. And I will not apologize for saying that. It is ugly. It's an abomination to God. And he says that if they don't come out of being gay, they are lost. Nope, you're wrong. Love is not love. Love is, no, that kind of love is disgusting. It's very disgusting. It's vile. It's sinful. And God abhors it. We were made in God's image. It's a choice they made. It's, it's not, um, they were not born that way. They chose to be that way. Now, how sinful that really is. They're, they're people that are so um, confused. They don't know what they're... Uh, well, you can do, you can disagree 100%, but I but uh, I think you need to get into the Bible because the Bible says that um, no God is not gay. The Bible talks about in Leviticus 18:22, you're not supposed to sleep with mankind as you do womankind. What means you're not supposed to sleep with the same sex as you are, um, and that's the problem. God created man and He created Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Eve or Adam and Steve. Or Cynthia and Roxy or anything like that. And these people come in here and say that gay is beautiful. That is vile and disgusting to say that. Because they're turning their back on God. You're calling God a liar. He instituted marriage between Adam and, Adam and Eve. And sadly, this world is getting away from that. And doing their own thing by bringing this gay agenda in here. And I'll tell you one thing. I am sick and tired of hearing about the gay agenda. The gay agenda has been shoved down our Christian's throat long enough. And we as Christians are going to start revolting against it. And any time anybody comes in here about their gay stuff, I am going to revolt. You're not allowed to bring it in my periscope. And if you bring it in my periscope, you're going to be blocked for doing so because I will not accept it anymore. And that's the thing. Some people believe that. Yeah, Adam and Eve. It's not Adam and Steve. Well, that you know, they talk about two men or two women. You might as well say Adam and Steve or Cynthia and Roxy or whatever or three men or three women or whatever. God instituted between man and woman. But people have gotten away from that. They're doing their own thing. And anybody goes to a gay wedding, Oh, that's so that's so wrong. How in the world can you go to a gay wedding and say it was beautiful? My goodness. I know where your where where your thoughts are. They're they're with the devil, they're not with God. Oh hi Mike. 
I'm sorry for blocking you the other night because I didn't mean to block you. I meant to block somebody else and I accidentally blocked you, but when I realized I unblocked you right away, I'm glad you came in. And happy Sabbath. I was hoping you weren't mad at me for doing that because I didn't do it on purpose. Believe me, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I thought you knew I didn't do it on purpose. I <laughs> I meant to block somebody else, but you and they come up the screen like that. So, um, what is greater, Jesus or the Sabbath? They're both great. But the Sabbath, you have to understand, is a very important day. You can't deny the Sabbath. Are you Are you going to take the mark of the beast? You're going to have the seal of God. He gave us the Sabbath. You're exactly right, Mike. He gave us the Sabbath. So, um, Jesus said, if you love me, John 14, 15 said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But unfortunately, people want to deny that. And they want to do their own thing. They want to keep their Sunday. I don't understand why all of this is pagan. You know, Sunday is nothing. shouldn't mean anything to anybody, but unfortunately it does. You know, and I haven't had one person yet prove to me that Sunday is the, is the day of worship. They're not going to be able to either. This is my fourth time of going through the Word of God, and I haven't found it anywhere. There's nowhere he said to go to church on Sunday because he rose on that day. Not one bit. He never said that. But yet people, people will say, well, it doesn't matter to God what day we go to church on. I'm Try telling God that. Um... And and that's the thing you try to tell try to tell God it doesn't matter what day you go to church it most certainly does, uh, yeah that's true Mike they do they they invest they they follow tradition, um, that's right the seal of the Holy Spirit and but the thing of it is you need to understand the seal of God is the Sabbath, the mark of the beast is the seal of Satan that's it's man made, um, he speaks to me through his word that's how he speaks to me, and he gives me the words to say to you. I wouldn't be able to say what I'm saying if I if I didn't know the Word of God and if I didn't have God in my heart, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But you know something? If it keeps you on edge for talking about the truth and you haven't accepted the truth, I don't apologize for that because you need to be kept on edge. You need to understand that the truth is the truth and that I have to give the truth out because if we don't, our salvation is, is, is important too. Um, Yes, I love gay people. I love all people. But you don't understand. Jesus loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. I'm like Jesus. He hates the sin. I hate the sin too. You don't understand. The gay people might be nice people, but what they're doing is so sinful, vile, and disgusting that God abhors it. And the thing of it is, he is not going to take them to heaven as long as they continue in it. If they want to stay in their gay lifestyle, let them do it. They've got free will. They can continue to do it. But they are going to pay the price, and they will not make it to heaven. We're not going to be happy to have them there anyway. You know, they're not going to be happy there, and we're not going to be happy having them there, because they're not. They're not going to be happy there because they can't do that stuff in heaven. The things you do here on this earth, you cannot do in heaven. We're not going to be taking doing stuff. We're not going to have cell phones, computers, anything like that in heaven. We're going to heaven to spend our eternity with Jesus. Um, he does care. He most certainly does care. You're you're calling God a liar. He instituted marriage between a man and a woman, and you're just you're downgrading him by thinking it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, if a gay person loves God, will he go to heaven? Well, I, he has to repent. God will not take him in his in, in his gay in his gay state. He will not, because he said that that gays are not a, are not going to the kingdom of heaven. I was going to read a, a verse to you in the Bible where it talks about. Um, no, there'll be no sex in heaven. We're not going to have that in heaven. What makes you think we're going to have that in heaven? That's that's worldly stuff. There's not going to be any worldly thing up there. That's all worldly. You're not going to be doing anything like that in heaven. The things you do on this earth, you're not going to do in heaven. He does love everyone. He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. He loves them, but he doesn't love what they do. You have to understand that. He does not love what the gay people do. No. He did not make them gay. That's a choice they made. They, he does not. We were made in God's image. Male and female created he them. They were not made gay. That's a choice they made. That He did not make them gay. You continue to say it. You are going to be gone and you'll never be back in my periscope again. Well, I'm, you're gone. Um, yes, you do. You most certainly do have a choice. And I'm not going to argue with, with ignorance. That you, you're, you're ignorant. And I'm not going to argue with ignorance. That's all you are is ignorant. You're you're accepting the you're accepting the gay lifestyle over God. How dare you? How shameful! How shameful that is! Um, and that's that's a, that's um, and that that's a, that's the thing. You you can't you can't 
you can't take can't gay the, take the life gay lifestyle and say that is there's there's a fit thing to go to heaven with because it's God. God didn't. God said no. Um, when do you have a choice? You should. They should have been been straight in the first in the very beginning. They have to ask God to become straight. Um, I'm all. Oh, you can say I'm shameful. All well, you're gone too. You're shameful too. Bye. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. If you're if uh, who cares? Don't bring it in here. And that's the thing. Well, I'm I'm sorry, but if you if you're going to accept the gay lifestyle over God, then then He's going to deal with you, and He's going to you're going to lose your salvation, and and you'll burn up in hellfire. Uh, and I don't apologize for telling the truth in here. The truth is going to hurt some people, you know. But I've got to tell the truth because you bring your gay stuff in here, and I'm you open it up for discussion. I'm going to tell you from now on. You come in here. Um, God did not kill those people. Satan did. You don't understand. You give you. You're telling. You're te saying that God killed people. He did not. Satan did. Um, that's right. He's not going to make it impossible for you to. Uh, that's right, Justin. He's not. But it's the it's the choice they they make. You know, he's not going to make it impossible for them to choose choose him. But they, it's the choice they make themselves. You know, you know, you're not born. You're not born gay. Because you know what? Gay is ugly. God didn't create ugly. He created, he created beautiful people. And gay is ugly. It's, it's vile and it's sinful. Um, I, was, I was born heterosexual. I chose to be straight. And I was never, I was never gay. Uh, when did I become straight? I've always been straight. I didn't want that vile, disgusting lifestyle. That's what it is. It's a vile, disgusting lifestyle. You know, it's very vile and disgusting. And... That's right. Even if they're born differently, God will not make a way to escape. You're exactly right, Justin. You're exactly right. Um, and that's the thing. They don't understand that God is going to deal with those that, that choose to be in that gay lifestyle. There's going to be no such thing as gay lifestyle in heaven. Nothing like that. Um, uh, no, they were not born that way. And I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, your comments are not worth, worth responding to because they were not born that way. It was a choice. You evidently don't believe, you don't believe in God because you want to call God a liar. And that's a, that's a shame. That's a shame calling God a liar. He's not a liar. You're the liar. You're telling people to, you're, you're misleading people. You're coming in here and deceiving people by saying that God, God made them that way. That's deception. That's, that's, that's false doctrine. And you have no right giving false doctrine out. So many people are in false doctrine. They're, they're in deception. And, and telling people that is so wrong. You know, and I don't, I don't apologize for telling the truth in here. If you don't like the truth, then you know the best thing you could do is just leave my periscope and never come back. Because I would prefer gay people to come in here anyway. Have their own periscope. Have all the kind of gays in there they want. Because I don't want them in my periscope because they're nothing but distraction. And they won't stay, stay and get into the Word of God anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they sure do. They, they, they steer away from it. You're right, Mike. They sure do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I am a Seventh Day Adventist. I most certainly am. And um, well, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna ignore this gay. Per this person is talking about gays. I'll block him. I'll block him. I'll block him when I do my replay. I'm just gonna ignore him for now. But I'm gonna say that people need to come back to the Sabbath. There's no sense in not keeping the Sabbath. Because they're they're denying the Word of God. They're denying the Ten Commandments. They're doing their own thing. And um, and that's the thing. Um, yeah, he does. He loves the gay people, but he doesn't love what they do. Um, and, and that's the thing. Um, I'm going to continue to talk about the Sabbath. I'm not talking about the gays. Don't ask any more questions about the gays because that's not part of my periscope. I do not want to talk about the gays anymore. I've had enough of them. They've, they've pushed their lifestyle on me too long. Um, and that, nope, I'm, you're gone. You're wrong. Cause I'm, you're gone. So, uh, yeah, it's secretly gay. You're full of it, too. You're a vile and disgusting person, Lily. Vile and disgusting. Vile and disgusting. You know, you gotta, just got to tell them. So, you know, God doesn't, God only pleads with people so long. And they don't understand. There's going to be many wicked people that are lost. Don't they understand? <clears throat> oh, this is, this is the talk. When we talk about the word of God, we, when we give the word of God, we can do that on the Sabbath. Well, I've had other periscopers uh, that are Seventh-day Adventists that come on here. There's nothing wrong with this because preaching the Word of God, 
you have to you should do it anytime the Sabbath especially anytime and that and that's the thing if you if you if you don't want to agree with that one then I don't know where you come up with that because no because we never said you couldn't uh, give preach the word of God on the Sabbath I do that that's why I come in here um, and that's the thing I preach the word of God on the Sabbath on Friday night Saturday night whatever you know and um, you left for many reasons well that's you need to come back to the word you need to come back to the truth because not being in the truth is going to cost you your salvation i'm fri i'm very afraid i'm sad to say because if you're going to church on sunday when that mark of the beast comes you'll be lost so you need to come back into the fold you know god's going to expect you to come back he's going to give you free choice but you left it and you should never have left the adventist church sure we're not perfect but we are the remnant church we are the true church we are the ones that keep the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Nobody else does. And to say that you left for many reasons, she is not a false prophet. So you're gone. Sorry. Uh, you start calling Ellen White a false prophet, then I, then, then, then you, you're a liar. You're gone. Bye. <laughs> well, that might be they all go to church on Sunday, but you can go to a, a you can go to ch Sabbath keeping church on online. Uh, and that's the that's the thing you got you can go online like you know um, oh there's uh, the one Doug bashes with and um, yeah the majority is wrong that's the thing you don't understand Evelyn the majority is wrong in this situation in it, in this situation I'm just telling you about the majority is wrong most of the time the majority is right on everything but on when it comes to Sunday the majority are wrong 100 percent because they are not Protestants. They are apostates. They are in apostate Protestantism by going to church on Sunday. You are the second beast of Revelation 13. Um, and that's the thing. If you don't come out of the Sunday keeping church, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, and that's the thing. If you don't want to come out of the Sunday keeping church, then then God will have to deal with you in his own way. I can't I can't do anything about it. I can only help you, but I but but I can only tell you what the truth is. If you don't want to hear the truth, then there's nothing I can really do anymore. There's nothing I can do to tell you the truth. You know, I've done everything I can possibly do. So, but I think it's after it's after ten o'clock here, and I think I'll I'll call call it quits on this periscope. But I want to sing my song before I <coughs> I quit. As long as I can get through it, the devil devil doesn't take. Um, that's right. Obey God and have the spirit of prophecy. You're right, Mike. You're so right. Um, They don't. Everybody that worships on Sunday will take the mark of the beast during that during that time. They don't have the mark of the beast now, but you will take the mark of the beast during the during National Sunday Law if you worship on Sunday. You've been told that before, Evelyn. You know what the truth is, but you're not heeding it. The Bible says if you if you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. What does that mean? You lose your salvation because you're choosing not to obey God. You're grieving away the Holy Spirit because you choose that. You choose Sunday over the Sabbath, and that's not wrong, and that's not right. You need to you need to take heed, like they said, and accept the Sabbath before it's too late. You have to, because there's no middle ground here. You either accept the Sabbath and the seal of God, or you accept Sunday and Satan, and the seal of Satan. So take your pick. If you want to go by way of Satan, then continue to go on Sunday, because that's exactly where you'll go. you go where Satan's going. If you, if you accept the seal of God, then you're going to have a death decree on your head. And that's right, it's the Bible. You'll have the death decree on your head, and at least you'll be saved. Um, but I don't, I don't want people to take the mark of the beast unknowingly. That's, it's sad when people do that. And I know, we know a lot of people are going are gonna to lose their salvation because of it. You know, they think that it doesn't really matter, but it so, most certainly does. It matters very much to God. And you've got to do what God says at all costs because it's very important. But I think I'll call it quits now. I'll sing my song before I go, and then, and then I'll, I'll call it quits. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us all be living sanctuaries for Jesus. And as the Bible says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So I hope you all have a great Sabbath, 
and a great night or day wherever you might be. Good night, Mike. And like I said, I'm sorry for for blocking you, and I'll and I I managed to unblock you right away. I tried to get a hold of you, but I don't know if you were on Twitter or not. But anyway, you're on here, so thank the Lord. So I hope you all have a good night and a blessed Sabbath. Take care. God bless and bye bye. <laughs>